One of the most popular questions I get is, what translation of the Bible should I read? Or, why do we have so many translations? Is there a best translation? Why is it so hard to know what the truth is? So, most Christians believe in the inspired Word of God, that is, that it is God breathed that the the Holy Spirit indwelt the uh, the writers of the Bible and they pinned down these words without error and that's the phrase that is used it is inerrant without error and we believe that God's word is infallible but what does that mean toward translations well translations different so we believe that the the original autographs the the word of god that was written in greek and hebrew and aramaic those uh copies of the of the scripture were preserved and protected and inspired by the holy spirit and then the manuscripts that came from those the, these are copies of copies of copies all of the autographs are gone we don't have any of those we don't have any original copies, but we do have manuscripts. Those are copies of the original that date all the way back to the first century within just a few years of the death of Christ. And so we have thousands upon thousands of copies. And that's why we're so confident that what we have represents the original autographs. So let's look at a few definitions before we get started in this too long. A translation, what is it? A translation is the, the taking of a word from the original language and bringing it to the uh, receptor language. In our case, that would be English. If you were to translate the original language to Swahili, for example, Swahili would be the receptor language. Uh, the original source language is, is the uh, autograph language. Now, there's a difference between a translation and a transliteration. Now, a transliteration is a word-for-word -word translation. That is, you have an equivalent in the original language, and you translate it to the equivalent in the English language. Most translations are done either by word for word or they're done by thought for thought or a mixture of the two. Now, the first group of Bibles that we're going to look at is a what we call formal equivalent translations. They take word for word translations and they try to maintain uh, a coherent word for word translation, but sometimes it's not possible because if you speak a foreign language, oftentimes you find out that there is not a word for that particular language, and so you have to come close, and that's that's what happens quite often. And so we'll be looking at some of those, and that would be like the New American Standard, uh, the RSV, the English Standard Version. The next group of Bibles is found in the Functional Dynamic Group, which is a thought-for-thought -thought translation, and uh, some of the more modern translations like the NIV, the idea of translating in this way is to try to do away with some of those historical concerns because a lot of times uh, words are translated word for word and it has a different context in the history of that culture and how they deal with things. And so when you bring it to English, the, the English reader doesn't understand the context of how that was written. And so this thought for thought translation uh, helps you to, to achieve that understanding. Now, the third type of translation is called a paraphrase, and it's not really a translation. It's, it's a translation with an interpretation put in it. That, that's what makes it different. Um, the good thing about these kind of Bibles is that if you don't have very much education on, you can only read on like a fourth or a fifth grade level, then this is perfectly fine Bible for you. It will make it understandable. Uh, you will be able to understand the gist, the basics of it. Uh, you're never going to be a Bible scholar with, with one of these. It's called a paraphrase. A paraphrase is just simply that. It is uh, one man's interpretation and 
explanation as to what is being said in the original text. And uh, one of the good ones is called The Message. And um, it's one of the better paraphrases if you're going to read one. I don't recommend it for most people in America, especially because most people have a, a better than a fourth or fifth grade education. But there are other paraphrases that some of them are really bad, like the, I think it's called the Cotton Patch uh, paraphrase. And if you've ever read some of that, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll see if I can't show you. So in the English Standard Version, it uh, John chapter 2, verses 12 through 16, it reads like this. He says, After this he went down to Capernaum and his mother and his brother and his disciples, and they stayed there for a few days, and the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and money changers sitting there, and making a whip of cords, he drove them out uh, of the temple with the sheep and oxen, and he poured out the coins and the money changers and overturned their tables, and he told those who sold pigeons, take these things away, do not make my father's house a house of trade. Now, the Cotton Patch translation is way different. Take a look at this. Later, he and his mother and his brothers and his students went down to Savannah and stayed there for a short while. Well, it was about time for the annual convention, so Jesus went to Atlanta. At the convention headquarters at First Church, he found preachers, politicking and businessmen, wheeling and dealing and exhibits all over the place. So he got a long-handled fly swatter and a broom and began clearing out the crowd and wrecking the merchandise booths. Get out of here with all this stuff, he shouted. Quit making a racket of my father's business. Yahoo! Cotton picket, what the Sam Hill? <laughs> it's like a, a bad hee-haw. <laughs> so if you're a new Christian and you just want a Bible that you can read and understand and, and get in uh, practice of reading the Bible, well, NIV is perfectly good. Uh, you can read it. It reads like a newspaper. Um, it's reliable. It has everything in it that you need. Now, I've been reading the English Standard Version now for a couple of years. The church that I'm attending now uses the ESV throughout the congregation, and it's always good to be uh, on the same page in your church if everyone's using one particular translation. That's what you want to use. I like the English Standard Version. It, it's a very fine Bible. It's uh, definitely a step up from the NIV. It's more accurate. Uh, it's a good, solid, word-for-word -word translation, and uh, it's written on about uh, 10th grade level, and uh, I think it's a good Bible. All right, my favorite translation is the New American Standard, and uh, it's about 11th grade translation, and we're going to listen to John MacArthur. He's one of the more famous pastors in America, and let him describe what the New American Standard is like. Yeah, I've been using the New American Standard Bible for probably the last 40 years. Uh, on a daily basis, in that word, and comparing it with the original text in Hebrew and Greek, I believe it is the most accurate representation of the original language. It is readable, and that's an important thing. It is consistent in its language. It doesn't sound like it came out of a committee. It, it sounds like it has one author, and since the Bible does have one author, that means they've been able to capture the biblical tone uh, consistently from Genesis to Revelation. And when you spend as much time as I have in the English text, comparing it with the originals in doing Bible exposition every week, you test that text against the original day after day after day. The New American Standard has stood the test. It is the clearest, purest, word-for-word, -word, formal equivalency edition in the English language I don't think anything is its equal. Now, let me say a word about King James. I think the King James Bible is a wonderful Bible. 
I grew up on the King James. Most of the Bible verses that I have memorized are memorized in the King James. I believe that the King James is uh, will always be a, a good translation, although it is a harder to read. It's more formal. Uh, it's uh, about 13th or 14th grade reading level, and, and some people have a hard time with the uh, archaic words. But it's a good Bible. When the King James Bible was written in 1611, they only had six manuscripts of the original uh, uh, copies uh, to, to look at. So later in time, in 1881, when the revised version was printed, they had 2,000 manuscripts to look at, and they dated all the way back to the 4th century. Whereas... The King James Bible, the manuscripts they were looking at, they were already a thousand years old when they started using it to translate. So wouldn't you think those copies that were closer to the original might be a little more accurate? Well, those in the revised version thought so as well. And so today we have all these multitude of translations and most of them, not all of them. There's some bad ones out there, but we're not going to talk about those. We're going to talk about all the good ones that are uh, that are available to you today. We have a multitude of good Bibles that you can look at and, and be held confident. There are over 5,800 uh, copies that we can look at, and we can compare one with another to make sure that they are perfectly safe. And they date all the way back to the late first century, and most of them in the second century. And so we have a, a wealth of knowledge that we didn't used to have that the new modern translations can give us. And of all the changes that have been made from the King James to some of these modern translations, none of them change major doctrine. All the King James Bible, New American Standard, the English Standard Version, the NIV, they all have salvation by grace. They all have the the uh, doctrine of man being very sinful. They have the plan of salvations in there. Uh, the blood is of Christ is... Uh, the terminology sometimes is a little bit different, but the doctrines are there, and you can rest assured that they're all good. All right, if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe below. Um, click the bell if you want to be notified, and share with your friends so that the, the more people will find what we're doing here. We're going to be looking at all kinds of topics uh, that relate to the Christian world, and uh We'll just keep plugging away until the Lord comes home.